imagine yourself 21 years old, sitting in one of the most historic buildings in San Francisco across from two seasoned Silicon Valley investors. They offer you half a million dollars to build a company. Would you take it? That's where I found myself this last fall, sitting next to my co-founder in a 10-minute interview as we pitch our startup idea to two investors who were scrutinizing every word we spoke. 10 minutes later, I walked out of the building, palms sweaty and heart racing, half a million dollars, access to Silicon Valley's most famous entrepreneurs, investors, and founders. My dream could come true. A few hours later, I got a call from the same investor. The voice on the other end posed a question that turned my dream into reality. Do you accept this offer? Born and raised in rural Vietnam, this was a dream come true for me, a golden ticket into the inner circle of Silicon Valley. Yet, in a decision that surprised even myself, I chose to walk away. I turned down half a million dollars and more. I'm here today to share the journey behind my decision and the realizations that reshaped my understanding of the true essence of entrepreneurship in the age of AI. My journey started at Stanford where my co-founder and I aligned on the idea of creating a profitable AI company. The idea I pitched, first to my co-founder, was software to help businesses optimize their generative AI spending. In other words, I wanted to help businesses maximize every dollar they spent on software like OpenAI and Anthropic by finding the most efficient model for each use case. Given my previous work experience, I knew this could make a profitable product as it rides on the boom of generative AI. With confidence in our idea, we submitted an application to a startup accelerator. Soon after we got the first offer, we received overwhelming interest from other investors in the Valley who were eager to write larger checks and provide more support than the previous. Fancy dinners, large checks, unlimited resources. It was my first time raising money from venture capitalists, and I got lost in the glamour of it all. As I sat in my Stanford dorm room thinking about whose money I should accept and how I should spend the next years of my life building this company, a sense of hesitation washed over me. I know customers who would pay for this product, and I know it could make a profitable company. So why am I so hesitant to say yes? I thought back to the farm I grew up on in central Vietnam, where my parents and neighbors worked together to grow most of the food we ate. I thought about my dad, who led rural development projects to help alleviate Vietnamese farmers from poverty through agriculture advancements. I thought about my mom, who empowered high school students to communicate with the world outside of our village by teaching them English. They were solving real problems. Was I? On the verge of signing the papers, a pivotal moment struck me. All this time, I was so focused on trying to find the perfect idea, infuse it with AI, and try to convince investors it was the next billion dollar business that I had forgotten about the most important part, the people I intended to help. Surrounded by my peers, investors, and entrepreneurs around me, I chased after success as defined by billion dollar market sizes and the allure of scaling fast. But my parents' work, impactful and meaningful, wasn't defined by how many users they had or how large their target market was. It was about the values they added and opportunities they created for their communities. They may not have been entrepreneurs in the modern sense, but they were innovators in their own right, creating sustainable solutions for their community that transcended through generations. Just like my parents, I want to create something people want, something people need, something that fundamentally solves a problem people have. 
When I first came to Stanford four years ago, I learned that great product starts with founders who deeply understand the people and problems. The solution could be a website, an app, or something entirely non-technical. The goal was to create something meaningful, needed and wanted by the community I aim to serve. However, as VCs began to pour more money into AI projects over the years, my approach began to silently warp into a new dimension. I found myself starting with AI, searching for high spending customers, and analyzing the intersection of this space for profitable problems to solve. Instead of starting by thinking about the people I want to help and problems I want to tackle, I shifted my thinking to how I can leverage and push this technology to produce the highest economic output possible. This mindset propelled the idea I pitched to investors to help businesses cut their generative AI spending by stitching together different models to address each use case. It seemed like the perfect plan as the success of my company would scale with the growth of the greater AI market, right? Well, as it turns out, I began to realize that wasn't very true. As I reflected on my idea and compared it to successful ventures in the Valley, I began to realize that I was building a short-term solution in the ever-evolving AI landscape. More specifically, I was building point solutions that failed to address the core challenges businesses face today. It wasn't a sustainable approach. Instead of stitching together different models, my solution could easily be defeated by a singular high quality and cost efficient model that would not only add value through cutting costs, but also create opportunities for new business innovations. However, because this alternate solution demanded substantially more capital and experience than I had, I knew it wasn't something I could pursue on my own. Ultimately, I found myself making one of the most difficult decisions of my life. I turned down all of the investments I was offered. Not because I feared failure, but because I realized I lacked purpose in my path ahead. I could have just taken the money and then pivoted to other ideas in the space. I could have just done it for the experience but I didn't. It became clear to me that solving pressing global issues requires more than just capital. It demanded purpose, driven by a deep understanding of the values I want to create and opportunities I want to unlock for those I'm solving for. In conversations with my peers, I noticed that this was not only a realization I had, but one that echoed amongst others after weeks to years of building. In the pursuit of innovation and capital, it's easy to lose sight of who we're building for and why we're doing it. Purpose is an essential part of the equation we need to emphasize when considering what's worthy of our time and capital. In the months that followed, I reframed my thinking, using the philosophies of my parents' work as the foundation. Now, as I'm currently figuring out what I'll be building next, I first start by talking to the people. Second, I listen deeply to the problems they're facing. Third, I reflect on my purpose at the intersection of these people and problems. How can I add value and unlock opportunities for those I'm solving for? Fourth, I think about how new technologies like large language models and open source data sets can redefine current systems. And lastly, I think deeply about how I can sustain my solution to last for generations to come. After all, a business cannot help others if it cannot support itself. As I stand before you today, sharing my journey, I want to emphasize the importance of aligning your work with your values. In the rush to innovate and disrupt in the age of AI, let's not forget the fundamental reason why we do what we do.
to solve real problems that make a difference in people's lives. As creators, builders, dreamers, and investors, my ask to you is this. Take a moment to reflect on the impact of your work. Ask yourself not just how you can succeed and sustain profits, but also how you can build with people and purpose. In the end, success is more than just building a company. It's about creating something that addresses the real needs of society. Our generation is equipped with more resources and knowledge than ever. Let's leverage what we have to build with people and purpose. Thank you.